I know. This is Mathilde getting back on board. The team is back. Yes. Go on, Mathilde. Oh, how does it feel? Fantastic. And Matilda is back and uh, we're here in uh, in Guadeloupe in uh, Punta Pete. Yeah, nice anchorage. Yeah. Not moving much. I know, it's fantastic. Yeah. It's super cool. It's super cool to be here. It's super cool to have Matilda. I ought to explain that on the Atlantic crossing we kept saying we were going to Martinique and uh, we changed uh, mid-ocean to come to Guadeloupe because they have an international airport and Matilde was flying in there, that's where she could get a ticket from Paris for. Yeah. 9th of January we had some uh, government restriction put in place where I was and uh, some new rules and they started talking about confinement and I actually freaked out a lot and said uh, that I was maybe not going to be able to join the boat if they decided to do a confinement. So I said uh, if there is a confinement I prefer to be confined on the boat with uh, Labyrinth, with my best friend, and in the Caribbean, obviously, than in the cold darkness of France. So I decided to change my plane ticket uh, to the 30th of uh, December. And, uh, and I mean, they, they arrived like, I don't know, 28 or 29, and I arrived on the 30. Um, so we start chatting by satellite phone, and I explain I'm going to change my plane ticket, and it's been confirmed. And they said, okay, well, they should just head out for Guadeloupe straight away. Um, uh, but yeah, they just decided that they couldn't wait to meet me and I couldn't wait to meet them. So they just said, okay, let's forget Martinique and just go and uh, bring her home to her. Because that's what you did. Yeah, we did. Well, I, I should also explain that when you look on the chart and you look at Guadeloupe, it, uh, it looks like the Atlantic swell rolls into all the anchorages on the, on the south side. There are no anchorages on the north side. And because the island is sort of slightly skewed, it looks like all the swell runs right in there, um, which is not true. The way the, uh, the, the, the ocean floor steps up in a couple of steps means that, uh, for some strange reason, the Atlantic swell doesn't come in at all. It is just dead flat. It's the most beautiful place to come out. Yeah, it's it is. Brilliant. next to town. It's a, it's a really cool spot. And, uh, um, and we're loving it. And so... Uh, so yeah, Erin and I spuddled our way in here and uh, went and picked Matilda up as soon as she arrived. And it was perfect because she arrived just in time for the New Year celebration. Yeah, also we had New Year together. I mean, yeah. Yeah, we didn't thought that we would and, no. and, and it was uh, very improvised but absolutely brilliant. It, so that was, that was, was nice. Cool. Yeah. So, so, that's, so that's where we are now. Um, and so we were just going to talk quickly about the, uh, about the crossing and, um, and, and one or two things. I mean, we, we had a super, super fast crossing. 23 days, three of those days were not sailing. We had two becalmed and one stopped altogether um, just to do a repair on the, uh, the self-steering on the rear, back of the boat. And, uh, and, and we made some water as well at the same time. We did a few other little jobs. Um, we, we, we set off from Las Palmas and we had to head in the wrong direction. Uh, for the first two days to um, drop off the weather boy and it was a bit of a struggle really um, we struggled to get to the area we got right on the edge of the area where they wanted it dropped but it, it was quite difficult it was very big seas we were beating upwind and uh, it wasn't the most comfortable start to our journey but once we dropped the weather boy off then uh, we we turned west and we had 25 to 35 knots with 40 knot gusts and we got our twin head sails up in, in a in a a little bit of a calm when the wind just dropped briefly got it all working got the pole on it thank you fast tack yachts again for the spinnaker pole and we set off like a scalded cat rocketing <laughs> downwind and we've done the calculations several times because we can't really believe it ourselves but we averaged crossing the Atlantic if you take out the three days we averaged over seven knots including the three days stopped it, it's 6.8 something knots we averaged it was just insane and we spent two weeks doing seven eight nine knots I mean that she shouldn't go that fast it was she's a good girl no, she is a good girl yeah good it, was, it was um and and everything went pretty smoothly we 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 had two little incidents we had one we had a problem with the the bolts on the bottom bracket of the self-steering that came loose and um, unfortunately wasn't spotted uh, quickly enough and spent four hours 
reeling from side to side and ovaled out the holes in the transom. So we had to stop and do a, a, a temporary repair on that. We've um, so now now we're in Guadeloupe. We've got all the kit ready, and we're gonna we're gonna fiberglass up the big steel plate, stainless steel plate on the and make a permanent strong repair. It is a noise. Oh yes, yeah, it's it, <laughs> it's it, when it changed. Yeah, it yeah, fine, yep. And uh, we're going to do a permanent strong repair on that, and that that'll be fine. But it's all right for the moment. And then we have one other little incident. Um, I think you said you wanted to discuss that. But uh, I don't know. I, I just um, for me, my well, first time, I'm uh, very sad. I couldn't manage to do the transatlantic. That's very important. That I say it. It was it was very important for me to do it. It was a dream. Um, it was yeah a, a big thing. I couldn't do it. For personal reasons, which uh, which is fine, I'm 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 okay with it. I decided to take my revenge, and uh, and the first ocean I'm gonna cross uh, officially is gonna be the Pacific. There you go, huh. big thing in there. I am doing that, and not the Atlantic. Atlantic is boring. Atlantic is easy. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't be saying that just next to someone that just crossed. No, no it's um, fine. It's fine. It was pretty uneventful. I mean, yeah. I mean, I I uh, apart from our one big event. Yeah, I, I arrived. Uh, I arrived on the boat. Um, I was I was a bit surprised because you know, this is this is my home, and I I left it in a certain condition. I arrived, and obviously things had changed. Things had been broken, which uh, you know, it's it's a crossing. It's uh, it's it's okay. Uh, but yeah, we 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 started already work, working on making it home again and uh, and uh, making it uh, you know proper clean and 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 repaired and all of that. So I'm I'm pretty excited when we finish that to to you know recover my my the way I left the boat. Yeah. Well, uh, but they they apparently had a, a big incident. So I was. Uh, at home, cozy, not moving uh, in uh, the coldness of France, you know, and um, I received a message from John and uh, and uh, I, I got uh, pretty scared and worried, uh, but he said that uh, the top of the mast, uh, well, it, they they started off uh, a watch with uh, with uh, low wind, you know, everything was fine, and, uh, and uh, failed to realize that the wind started to become stronger and stronger until they had an enormous gust with... Uh, with with a sail that that wasn't appropriate for it and um and obviously uh it, it it tipped the boat quite a bit and then a wave addition to that on the side of the boat and uh, the top of the mast ended up touching the water uh for the people sleeping inside uh, was a mess because you can imagine a roughly horizontal floor i say roughly because it moves all the time suddenly becoming vertical which uh you know it's 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 quite surprising to wake up it's quite a, quite, quite a wake up and um and yeah so the, the mast uh, touched the floors i've heard that uh, i was all on the satellite phone and obviously was very worried for the crew for the boat um i i but john reassured me saying it's everything's fine um i i you know i just we sorted out, which obviously I didn't doubt because uh, John is, is an absolutely brilliant captain, and uh, and that I didn't have any doubt about it. Uh, but yeah, quite quite a bit of a scare, and um, he doesn't really know how he did it uh, because obviously the adrenaline in, flushing in, and he was sleeping and woke up with all of that things falling down. Uh, but he actually hurt his leg, uh, to which I obviously straight away went from sailor friend to nurse <laughs> and uh, and ask all about his leg and turned out that um, it was a fractured leg uh, so not broken luckily um, it was a it was just a fracture on 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 the bottom of the leg i don't know if you can see but uh, roughly here and um so um we I, I arrived just a few days after they arrived here as i said earlier and I took care of it. Um, I, I just uh, was uh, like a, a bit of. Uh, I, I just took over the, the infection. It was a, a small infection in there because it was a little hole. Uh, and I did a bit of my nurse and uh, and uh, just uh, noticed that a little piece of bone was there, but nothing too bad. Uh, it was a fracture, so he had have to stay calm now and uh, not move much which means that all the physical stuff is going to be done by me uh, but uh, yeah I'm, I'm going to make sure that he stays quiet and that it heals well and I'm going to take care of it and uh, obviously disinfect it a lot and make sure that everything goes 
super well and that uh, this fractured leg doesn't become more of an incident. Back to normal. Back to normal and uh, we are both gonna take care of our our baby labyrinth and uh, make her yeah. home. Well can I, can, I, can I just say at this point that, that, that just rewinding a bit that the form is and always has been with anybody on watch is that uh, I just say if anything changes, so if the wind goes up or the wind speed goes down, the direction changes of the boat, the direction of the wind changes, you hear a noise that's unusual, just if anything changes, you just wake me up. And if I get woken up six times, I don't mind. I, I go back to sleep so easily. Yeah, that's very true. He doesn't even <laughs> touch the pillow, he's already asleep. <laughs> well, the thing is that quite often people will wake me up and they'll say, this is uh, this has changed. and I. Give it a little thought and I say, oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's okay, you can leave that and go straight back to sleep. Or I'll say, okay, I'll come out. And, uh, but it's really simple. And unfortunately, uh, this particular incident, I wasn't woken up and the wind speed climbed from a predicted 10 knots, which was what we had. <laughs> okay, now just, just uh, bear with me a second. <laughs> Okay. Okay, well, we're, we're, <laughs> where were we? <laughs> yeah, well, the camera nearly fell off, <laughs> fell over. Little um, incident. Little incident. Another little incident. Um, uh, so, where were we? We weren't woken up. Oh, yes. So, um, the, the, the wind speed was 10 knots, and that's what was predicted through the night. And it had been, it had been 10 knots for all the afternoon, and the skies were clear. And we had a, a big Jenna up. And uh, I was uh, I was nervous about leaving it up. We normally reduce sails at night. It's just how you work. Um, this particular night we didn't, and I I warned everybody when you take your watch, if this wind speed starts to change at all, you must wake me up. Unfortunately, I wasn't woken up, and uh, the wind speed climbed and climbed and climbed. And by the time it got to 40 knots, the person on watch decided that hand steering was the best option but failed to turn off the wind vane, so it was hand steering against that, managed to broach the boat, which is turning it sideways to the wave. And as it leant over, a wave hit the underneath of the boat and just threw it on its side into the water. Erin yeah. um, and I were asleep down here and uh, that, we woke up as the boat was on its side. And naturally enough, it was a big wake up call. It was uh, five o'clock in the morning Erin was a complete star. She came out on the foredeck with me and helped me get this sail down that was badly damaged and, and um, yeah. overpowering the boat. Yeah. Well, we lost the sail. Yeah, we've lost the sail. Yeah, yeah. The, the sail is no but more. But it, it's it could have it could have been so. We could have lost the boat. Yeah, we could have lost, lost the mast. Boat. Anything. So I'm, I'm yeah happy we just lost, just the, lost the sail. The, yeah, yeah. That's the only thing that we've lost. And uh, like I say, Erin was was. I mean, she's not the most experienced sailor. The foredeck in the dark, 40 knots of wind, a badly damaged sail flogging, trying to get it down. She was just really good. She yeah. was great. Um, so we, we we dealt with the incident. It was uh, it was one of those one of those things. Shouldn't have happened, but it did. And uh, yeah, as Matilda said, somewhere in the in the in the melee, I I crushed my shoulder and my leg, and unfortunately, I've, I've got a hole in my leg and and a, a fractured bone. But be, you know, it's it's nothing too serious. I can walk on it. It's not much more. Than uh, but, 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 but you're staying quiet. I know. All right, He's be... impossible to keep quiet. I swear to God. <laughs> uh, we 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 used to call it so um, with Amandine uh, that uh, you all know from our previous uh, previous episodes. Uh, with Amandine, we used to call it the zoomies. So it's it's literally he. He's quiet and nice and everything's fine, and then suddenly he stands up, and and becomes possessed by. <laughs> an energy demon and he starts to, 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 to jump like a bouncing ball all over the boat. Uh, so that's him. So um, we, I'm, I'm going to have to, I'm, I'm very sorry, I'm going to have to handcuff you. <laughs> I've you, dreamt about you, this yes, you have. a long time. <laughs> now I have a medical excuse to do it and uh, yeah, I'm going to have to oh handcuff you. I mean, what do you guys want to see that? Because I, What yeah, is my it's, life? It's going to be brilliant. Oh God. <laughs> Happy ah, I'm back. Yeah. I know that I am happy. I, I, you cannot believe how happy I'm. Happy, how much I'm. Yeah, I'm so. I'm so happy. I'm tongue-tied. 
I'm really happy you're back, Matilda. Yeah. yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's so cool. I've got my best mate back with me. Back to annoy you. Yes. Ah. <laughs> the team is back together. It's brilliant. And we've got New Year coming up. Yeah. And then we've got a whole island to explore. And we've got a lot of exploring to do. So Erin uh, and I, um, uh, the day before Matilda arrived, I arrived back, Erin and I nipped ash ashore to the main town to do some food shopping, get some fresh stuff. A bit... Uh, short on fresh vegetables as you can imagine when we arrived <laughs> and um, so I sent Erin off to the, a market a vegetable market she went off to the market to get some fresh stuff and I stayed looking after the tender and we parked it by the fish market and it was parked by all the guys that do all the fish cleaning and uh, super cool guys I got chatting to them we made a new friend called Herbley he's lovely and I mean th these guys they earn like they don't earn very much man and they are so welcoming and so nice and so kind. They are lovely. And uh, so we're, we're going to take Herbley a present when we, when we see him next. I've got a bottle of rum for him. Um, yeah, cool. I mean, it just... Maybe we could, um, we could um, try and see if anyone wants some glasses uh, there. As, yeah, as you're all aware, uh, we have this project uh, of uh, reading glasses uh, that we... we intend to start now since we are starting to get in the Caribbean and, and small islands and things like that. And uh, I mean, Guadeloupe is French, so you know, there's plenty of access to opticians. Uh, but then those guys, I've, I've met them very shortly. Uh, they, they, they're just local fishermen, uh, some are from the nearby islands. Um, Dominica is, is, is also quite poor. And, and as John said, they don't earn much. And, and a an optician, even if you have access to it, it's still quite expensive to have some reading glasses. So, um, so I mean, we've we've had a small discussion about it, and uh, we've, yeah. we're probably going to try and see if uh, if there is anyone that that wants a pair of glasses in the fishing market. Uh, it would be great for them. So we'll, we'll, we'll try and do that. Yeah, that's right. We want to get to the western side of the island. Uh, Matilda has a friend that lives over there, so we want to get over there and um, do some exploring. And we met some nice, cool people in the Anchorage. We've met a guy from Venezuela. Here in the Anchorage, what a cool chap! Yeah, I played guitar. guitar. Yeah, you've been playing with, guitar uh, with uh, a guy called Louis and uh, his mum. They they uh, they have what they call a gite in uh, in France, and they're here on holidays. And uh, he he plays amazingly. We played chess, which uh, he beated me up the first time, but hey, hey you know the warrior here. Yeah. Of course, I beat him now the second time. It was it was just the first time was just to try it out, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, huh. So yeah, we met some cool people, and uh, I'm gonna take him exploring and see my uh, my friends over the other side of the island. I hope he's gonna like it. Oh, I'm gonna love it. I know I'm gonna love it. And the people, um, yeah, just yeah and uh, and that's it for uh, for today's update. <laughs> So we are here celebrating New Year. I think it's a small boat. With John here, Erin down there, and starting the hostilities. <laughs> Okay, so Erin's going for a swim. So what's actually going on here? This is uh, Matilde making pastry. What are you making, Matilde? I have no idea. <laughs> she told me to make it thin, so I'm making it thin. Is that thin enough for you? That's beautiful, thank you. Can you it's touch beautiful. it with that? Wow. Okay. Very good. But next time you should say we should. So, Erin, what are we making? <laughs> We're attempting to make Chinese dumplings um, with exciting new ingredients from the market that we don't know how to cook. <laughs> what have we got? What exciting new ingredients have we got? Okra. Okra. Yeah, 
I've never cooked it before, but I've heard that it's really good. Okay. So I guess we'll find out. <laughs> nice. Okay, well, the girls are producing Chinese. Uh, please, you behind your screen, I can see you. Uh, don't forget to click the subscribe button um, and to like our video, of course, come yeah, on. I mean, and leave us a comment. Yeah, it, it's, it's not much. It takes about two minutes for us to change the world. Change the world with Big Ocean Small Boat. Thank you.